Okay, Geotrig, this is lesson two. We're going to start lesson two. Um, we're going to start off by talking about areas, and some of these we already talked about or should know. What's the area of a triangle? Half the base times height. So let's write that in there, one-half base times height. Half the base times the height, it comes from basically the 2D you know, shape, I guess number four. What is area? It's not the outline, but the inside, we'll even say. I know I'm kind of doing this out of order. And so area is basically the inside. I know I'm jumping around. And it says, where did this come from? It comes from, um, if you have done this before, we could take a rectangle. Base times height would be a rectangle, and I cut it in half. And we find out that it's a tri that, that triangle would have half of that um, area. But we're going to show later on here that it also stands for any kind of triangle that half the base times height works. So I'm going to leave that blank there. But area of a square or rectangle is... How do you find the area of a rectangle? Everyone's done this since like fifth grade. A times B, or we use letters like, or the words of length times width. So we use L times W. You know, sometimes we use different variables at different times, and of course it matters on what the variables are on that given shape. Area of a circle is, this one's pretty standard, pi r squared. 2 pi r is not the area, it's the Radius. circumference. So be careful um, that you should know the difference between those two. So we have these three triangles. The first two is just a copy. I copied the ABC triangle, but what I did was I added an altitude. And remember, an altitude is a fancy word for height. And that height actually forms a right triangle, a right angle, sorry, with the base. So it's straight up and down, which should form a 90-degree angle with the floor. Now, when I did that, it took the big triangle and broke it into two other triangles. And what happens there is it allowed me to say, hey, at this point, that highest point of the triangle straight down forms the height h. We still don't know what it is. I don't know what base is, but I do know that as I went and I dropped the altitude there, it took b and split it. There had to be two different triangles. So I took b and I said, the part that was in triangle 1, that's why we have the 1's there, is side or base M. On triangle 2, the base over there is N. So we should know, or by looking at the two pictures where it says set are congruent, that B would equal M plus N. Okay? Does that make sense? They're copy and paste. I just dropped an altitude to form two different triangles. We're actually going to show that the far left triangle in the middle, which are the kind of the same, is still the same area as the far right, number three. What's the area of a triangle? Again. One half base times height. So I need to use this quite a bit. That's area equals. The middle one has two triangles. So if I find the area of triangle one and find the area of triangle two, what do I need to do to find the big triangle? What do I do with those two triangles then? Add them together. And if I add them together, I'll have this area of that one, right? Because they're the same picture, just split. So triangle one, number one, what's the area? One half. What's the base? 
What's the base of triangle one? This is triangle one right here. M. That's M. What's the height of triangle one? H. So you're just saying that it's just one half M H. If I knew what M and H were, I'd have a number, right? Well, then what's two? That's one half. What's the base of triangle two? N. And the height is H. Or, to make it hopefully a little bit less complicated with all those parentheses, it's one half N times H. Would you guys agree? And then we just said that, wait a minute, those two smaller triangles make up the bigger triangle. So what do I need to do with them? You need to add them. So we're saying that 1 plus 2 is going to be 1 half mh plus 1 half nh. Makes sense, right? Interesting. When I gather things like that, a lot of times to make it more simplified, we usually factor it. We gather the pull out things that are common. What's common in both of those? They got the same height. So H is definitely in both of them. What else is in both? The one half. And if I pull one half out, what's left of that first group? M. What's left of the second group? N. No, wait, 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 wait. So half of the height times M plus N will be the area of the whole entire triangle. So we're saying, we're saying that that whole entire area is this. But didn't we state something earlier? We dropped the altitude that split up what? The base, or what we called B. Didn't we say that B is M plus N? Yeah. So, shouldn't that actually read one half the height times base? Or, if we rearrange it, one half base times height? And isn't that exactly what the formula for a triangle is? Okay, what happens if I have an obtuse triangle? Can we find the height, or not find the height, can we find the area of this? I'm going to call this triangle one. Okay. Now, if I took this, and I draw it next door so I don't have to put all the stuff on it. Okay. Where would the height of this triangle be? Is it inside? So it definitely would not be this, right? Hey, there's your height. Yeah? No. So we definitely don't want that. The height is on the outside. The height should be from the tallest point straight to the ground. Well, here's the ground, right? The ground's there. Coming straight down would be there, correct? An altitude forms a 90 degrees with the ground. It happens to be intersecting the ground outside the triangle. We still are saying that this is triangle one. Then I'm going to call this triangle two. If I wanted to know the area of triangle one, what are some thoughts? Is it one and two combined? That would be the area of one. If 
I drew another triangle here, and I called that triangle three. Triangle three would be all of it together. Is that the total area of one? No, it's got too much, right? Now here's the problem. This is B. We know this is C. A is in there somewhere. And that dotted line on the far right, we're going to call the height, right? So if I translate that over to triangle 3, that's a bad H. I got height there. This hypotenuse is C. But what's the length of the bottom? What's the base? Is it still B? No, because B only goes to right here, right? There's a whole nother section on there. Do I know what that is? No. Can I just call that D? So then on triangle three, what would the base be? B plus D. Not B minus D, but B plus D. There's going to be a minus here soon. But the whole entire length across for number three would have to include the length of B and part D. So what's my thoughts here with those three triangles, the big, large one, one, and two? What's the connection between all of those if I want to find the area of one? What do I need to do? Can I find the area of three? And then what do I have to do? Subtract two. So if I find area of three, that have to be one half. What's the base? B plus D times H, right? What's the area of two? Because that forms a right triangle. That's kind of nice. That's one half. What's the base? D times the height, right? Or I can shorten that one up to be just one half dh. How, how is that going to help me figure that out? I got to take that number three, right? Three minus two is going to equal one. Well, isn't that just nice? It's just math in general. But triangle three minus triangle two will give me triangle one because I'm taking the larger area, taking the piece of triangle that I don't want should give me the triangle that I do want. Hey, what can I do with three? Look at that area. Look at that. It's one half times the quantity B plus D times H. What can I do from both sides? It's a D word. Distribute. I can distribute the half in and distribute the H in. You think we can handle that at the same time? So if I distribute the half to the B and the H to the B, what do I end up having? One half base times height, right? Plus half times D is one half D, and then multiply that by H is H. Hey, there's three expanded. What do I need to do with that? I need to subtract number two, which was one half dh. <gasps> what happens? They cancel. And the answer ends up being one half base times height. That just shows that even if the altitude or the height of the triangle is on the outside, that you still get one half base times height. I don't have to fool around by adding a triangle, some variable, some extra piece, and then subtracting it out. Works. I'm not requiring you guys to remember that whole entire process, but I at least want you to say, hey, it's a formula, and it works, and it works for all types of triangles. That's kind of cool. So these three examples, try to do them on your own. Real quick, I'll give you guys about two minutes to figure them all out.
for problem number one, you could do it the long way by finding the, the, the area of the right triangle, the large right triangle, and subtracting out the small one. Or just use the fact that 1 half base times height, as long as it's the base of the triangle, it works. Rectangle, you should know that. We've done that many, many times. 3 can be a little tricky. Make sure you use the formula correctly. Okay. Triangle, formula, what is it? 1 half base times height. What's my base? 13. What's my height? 6. That gives me an uh, area of, now let's, I'm not going to do half of 13, that's just kind of silly, but I can do half of 6. What's half of 6? 3. 3 times 13 is 39. Is that the answer? No. What did we just find? We just found the area of the larger triangle. What do we need to do then? Subtract out the smaller version here, which is 1 half base times height, which would be 1 half times 3 times 6. Again, I'm not going to do half of 3. I'll do half of 6. Half of 6 is 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. And when I do the subtraction, I get 30. And we're in feet, so it would be feet that would I would be considered the long way to do that. What's the quicker way to do that? We just kind of showed that it works, and it should work. What's the quicker way? Do I even need to add that small red one in? No. What's the base? Ten. What's the height? Six. What's half a ten? Five times six? 30. Okay. Two different ways to do the same problem. It goes back to our problems with the circles. Sometimes you need to break it into pieces. You need to do that. Other times you can avoid it. And it's all about knowing when you can avoid and when you cannot avoid. Two, what's the formula for a rectangle? Length times width or 16 times 10, which is 160 feet squared. Make sure you label it if there's units. I would expect everybody should have got that one. That's pretty straightforward. We've been doing that for many years. Three, what's the formula? It's pi r squared. Okay, so we got pi r squared. What's going to be the part that's going to trip some kids up? They're going to do this instead of this. They're going to do the diameter, diameter instead of the radius. The diameter is 18. 18. The radius is, so I need to do 9 squared, and 9 squared is 81 pi inches squared. Also, notice I did not do pi in my calculator, 3.14 multiplied by 81. I want to leave it in terms of pi. It's a lot easier to deal with later on. If I asked you to go to decimal or two decimal places, then do it. But most of the time, I'm never going to ask that. Any questions? Okay. Now we have a new object. Hey, that's a trapezoid. I, and it says find the area. Well, if you remember the formula for a trapezoid... It's one half what? Anybody remember? Okay, we got some international students whoops, that are telling us a little bit different formula because they use different variables. What's that? They use different variables. But here we're using B1 and B2. B1 and B2 stand for? Base 1 and base 2. Now, say I did not know this formula, because who wants to remember formulas, right? Nobody. 
What's the other option? How are we going to do this? We're going to do this by... Breaking it up. Break it up. Break it into pieces that you know what they are. There are two ways to do this. What's some way that, that you can get shapes that you know? Rectangle and triangle. So I'm assuming we're talking about dropping an altitude straight down right there. It forms a rectangle and a triangle. Do we know all the pieces about those? Yeah. What's the length and width of the rectangle? Three and four. So three times four is equal to? Twelve. So the square footage or the area is twelve square feet. Now we just have to go to the triangle. Oh, that's not too bad. That's one half base times height. Okay. Uh, what's the base? Oh, geez. It's not six. Why is it three? Because you have to subtract the other three. Right. Three feet's up here. If it's a rectangle, we know that the top and bottom will be the? So it means it's three here. If it's six all the way across, then it has to be three there. So we know the base is three. What's the height? Why is it four? The same exact reason as three. The four from over here is the same four for the height. In the other class, some people were trying to say five. They wanted to use that five. It's there. Why don't we have to use it? It's irrelevant to our process here. Now, I could break it up into a different size, and then it could be used. But it's not needed. And three times four is 12. And divide that by two, I get six. And six plus 12 is 18 feet squared. Wait a minute. They just told us down here that if I add up all the sides, it ends up being 18 feet squared. Or 18 feet. That's the perimeter, though. Is the perimeter and the area always connected like that? No. It just happens to be in this problem. Okay? People were kind of astonished, like, hey, can I just add up all the sides? And we've got an answer. No. Okay? It just happens to be in this particular problem. So be very careful on that. Open your books to page 20. Copy the problem in. So we're asked to find the area of this figure. How many pieces do you see? How many different shapes? Two. I see a rectangle and not a full circle, but a half circle. Well, I think it's pretty easy to find the area of the rectangle. Again, that would be what? Two times three which is 6. Can we find the area of a circle again? Pi r squared. What's the radius? 1. And 1 squared is 1. So that leaves me with pi. Is that what I want? No. That's the whole entire circle. I only want one of that. Half. And so when I cut that in half, it's pi over 2. What do I need to do with those two numbers? Combine them by adding. Someone in the last hour said, that must be 3 pi. That's 3 pi. That's what they said. Is that the answer? What did they do to the numbers? They, they said that when you combine the 6 in the pi over 2, you get 3 pi. What did they do wrong? They multiplied. We're supposed to be adding because we're adding the two different areas together. 6 plus pi over 2. What's the units on this? Is it inches in our book? Oh, meters. Okay. So it's meters squared. Notice I did not convert it to a decimal. Pi is okay to be pi. Your homework of lesson two, day number one of notes is page 24, 7, 16, 20, and 23. Have a great day.